Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It is so lovely to have you here. Um, I just want to say um, welcome if you're new. We've had some new subscribers recently. Thank you so much for um, all of the love on my vlog last week about walking the catwalk at the Stitch Festival. Um, it's been really lovely to have so many comments from you guys and people enjoying it and people who are actually at the show who said that they saw it and stuff. That was really, really cool. Um, so yeah, thank you so, so much for that. Um, I thought it would be really fun this week actually to do a little bit of a sort of relaxed Q&A. So you may have seen I put up a post earlier in the week onto YouTube where I asked um, if anybody had any questions and I also put it up on my Instagram and I got a few questions um, and some really interesting like really varied questions so I thought it would be fun to answer some of those today. Um, the sun is going in and out so I've got this weird little like sun puddle going on here. <laughs> Let me see if I can sort that out. Before I get started I also just wanted to say a big thank you to anybody that follows me on Instagram. This week I've had a lot of a sort of like an outpouring of support and stuff because I've been having quite a difficult time recently with my health um, and um, um, I've been struggling quite a lot and so people have just been yeah really supportive and really lovely um uh, I also shared as well that um you know it makes a really big difference when people support me on my substack because basically my substack and my youtube and my freelance writing work are currently my only forms of income so it would be really really lovely if you felt like you could maybe support me over on substack as well as on youtube if that's something that you're interested in um i don't want to sort of be like constantly plugging <laughs> all the time um but yeah basically for less than a coffee and a cake a month it's five pounds a month you get a post every week um straight into your email box all about um, living a handmade, homegrown and slow life. So examples of posts recently have been things like uh, feature articles um, on, I did a flower farmer, Bowbridge alpaca farm in Scotland. I've got a shepherd's hut coming up that's been designed by an artist and a woodworker. Um, I also do how to's like how to grow, how to start growing your own food, how to grow your own cut flowers, how to get published in a magazine. Um, and obviously, once you sign up, you actually get access to the backlog of all the paid for articles that have been coming out this year. So it started in January. So you get to you can read all of those, but then you also obviously get all the new posts every month. Um, so, yeah, if that's something that you would like, I'll leave the link below so you can sort of check it out and see what you think. Um, I would really, really appreciate your your support um, over there because it makes a huge difference um, to like what I'm able to do. Obviously living with severe like chronic illness for the last five years, um, although I'm a lot better now than I used to be, it's very hard to like have a normal job and manage a normal workload. So sort of doing things like Substack and YouTube has allowed me to um, earn a living um, without like with that works around my illness basically. So yeah, um, it's also a place as well that I would share all my sort of exciting announcements of which there may be one coming later this year. Um, so yeah, it would be really, really nice if you could follow me over there um, and become a paid subscriber. Um, and that is the end of my plug. <laughs> Um, let's move on to the Q and A, shall we? Um, oh, by the way, this is a new make, which I'm going to talk about in my next makes video because I'll be doing a... Where are we up to now? I think it I think it'll be an April and May makes video or will it be a March and April? No, it must be a March and April makes video. Yeah. So the end of this month I'll do a mix. So this will be in there. It's a new Davenport dress and a William Morris viscose. I will talk about it properly in that video, but there's just a little sneak peek for you. <laughs> um so yeah, I've got the questions up here on my laptop. Um so I will work through them. So the first one is from um, Dakshmina6453 who asked me um, how do you not let the algorithm and the complexes that these platforms give affect you? Love your channel though. Thank you very much. I love having you here. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a really hard one because obviously, as I've just said, I'm now earning quite a lot of my income from this kind of stuff. You know, Instagram helps point me towards brands that I can work with um, and um, YouTube. Obviously, I make money with advertisements and sponsorships and things like that. So it's very, very difficult not to get really hung up on like views and subscribers and, you know, creating like clickbait type videos. Um, because I obviously see loads and loads and loads of those clickbaity videos and you see like the title that's like 
why I'm quitting my life or something <laughs> and you click on it and actually it's just somebody chatting about how they're a bit tired and they're doing some gardening. Um, so it's a really difficult one because I can't tell if people enjoy that kind of stuff on YouTube, they like those big dramatic titles or whether they actually find it a bit irritating because it's a bit clickbaity. Um, so I like to try, I've always done with social media, I've really tried to produce content very organically, just things that I would naturally enjoy doing so if i see a trend that i like and i want to hop on it then i will so like for example on instagram the trend at the moment is to do a lot of reels that have like point of view like pov you know whatever um i gave up my life in the city to live a handmade homegrown life and now i'm so happy um that kind of thing is really popular and i actually really love those i really enjoy watching them i find them very inspiring so i've enjoyed sort of like hopping on the bandwagon there and making some of those on you on instagram with YouTube, I think it's a little bit more difficult. Um, there are definitely trends and stuff. But as I say, I just like to make what I like. Because for me, like, I feel as well, there are so many people creating content on the internet that actually the best thing you can do is just be yourself because that's what's going to draw people. If you want to build a big following and stuff, that's what's going to draw people to you is if you're just yourself because no one else is you. So you can bring something really unique to the party. And I like consistently try to remind myself of that when I'm worried that maybe a video won't do as well. Cause I have lots of videos that don't do as well as others. Some of them do really well, you know, um, a few, weeks ago months ago i put up a video about my spring sewing plans and that went really well you know that had like almost you know it had something like eight and a half thousand views or something loads of comments loads of likes people really loved it and so obviously it'd be tempting to do more of those kind of videos like sewing trend videos and things like that um but unless i'm really really interested in doing that i'm not going to do it so for example a lot of people do sewing tutorial or knitting tutorial videos they also do really really well but I don't really have an interest in doing that there's so many on the internet I don't feel the need to do it I just want to simply talk about what I'm making and how I'm and you know how I'm making it and like I'm going to be putting up a vlog soon um this little sneak peek of what's coming up in the next month I'm going to be doing a vlog of making my birthday dress for my 30th birthday party and um I'm not going to do like a tutorial, like a ha like step by step guide. It's literally just going to be taking you along the process with me. And you may pick up some tips and tricks that I might share of how I make the pattern because I'm doing the Mabel pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. Or you might not. Um, and I just that's what I like to share is I like to sort of just share like snippets of my life and what I'm up to. And yeah, that may mean that I don't grow as quickly. So I think like in answer to your question, like how do I not let it bother me? I basically just focus on what is it that I want to share? Um, remembering that I, no one else is me. I have a unique voice to bring. And so what I have to say is just as worth what somebody else has to say. <laughs> Often I'm just blathering on a lot, so maybe not. But <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's really, really important to just stay true to who you are be very organic be very natural and just enjoy it if you're not enjoying it then why are you doing it so yeah i hope that answers the question <laughs> okay so the next question is from frey stitches on instagram and she's asked where do you get your sewing and garment making inspiration from i love your style thank you so much i i think your name is actually freya isn't it <laughs> thank you so much for that um I have always had a very girly, vintage, flouncy, frilly style. That's just who I am. Um, when I was younger, when I was a teenager, the fashions were all, um, I don't know if you guys remember, like those disco pants, those like shiny leggings. <laughs> everybody wore those hideous shiny leggings um that was really really popular and like converse and trainers um also when i was at school jack wills was really big so everybody was wearing those like um striped jack will shirts uh rugby shirts skinny jeans bird nest hair and i'd be there dressed in like a little 1950s dress that went in at the waist and out <laughs> big bow flowers all over it i actually used to dress really vintage when i was younger I was really really into my vintage and I grew up in Liverpool which had a lot of really cool vintage shops and vintage markets and fairs and things so I used to pick up all sorts of stuff um, and yeah I basically have just always had the confidence to just dress with what makes me happy like I've had people comment and make you know say nasty comments before or make me feel uncomfortable about something that I'm wearing 
but most of the time I was able to just sort of shrug, shrug it off and ignore it. Um, so yeah, I would say that my style has always been very like tra traditionally feminine um, and I enjoy that kind of thing. And I would say that since I've started sewing and I've um, been making things that are sort of very adaptable to my chronic illness, that's really helped me develop my style. I always used to love wearing dresses. That's always been the way. I've always had lots of dresses, but I used to wear jeans as well. Whereas now, because I have endometriosis and digestive issues like IBS and things, I find wearing trousers and jeans extremely uncomfortable. So I basically only make dresses and then I knit cardigans and jumpers to wear over the top of the dresses. So that obviously really helps define like what I make. Um, and then I look a lot on like Pinterest. I find a lot of inspiration on Pinterest, but and also obviously Instagram. I follow a lot of sort of accounts like Rosary Apparel, for example, um, just Lauren Johnson. Um, both of them are on YouTube and Instagram and they do a lot of cute dresses, puff sleeves, you know, lace frills, rifle paper company, gingham, all that kind of stuff. The crafty pie. I really love her style as well. So there's quite a few people that I follow who have that kind of like girly girly style. Um, so yeah, I would say that I get a lot of my inspiration for sewing from other, uh, other sewists but also just on Pinterest, just looking at outfits. And I follow quite a lot of brands, things like Sonderfloor, uh, Little Women, Atelier. Um, oh, who else do I like? Um, I often will look at like brands clothes, um, Bowdoin. And, you know, I quite like going shopping to those really fancy boutiques. We have quite a few of them in the Cotswolds where I live um, and looking at all the really expensive fancy clothes and getting loads of inspiration. They often have really nice knitwear as well, getting loads of inspiration and then um, making a version of it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I would say my inspiration for sewing basically comes from all over. It comes from the sewing community, but it also comes from online. It comes from television that I watch, but I very much stick to this kind of feminine dresses, in at the waist, frills, bows, florals, um, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, um, I've also been very inspired recently as well, which I think works with the Davenport dress with the little frills and stuff um, by Little House on the Prairie, which I started watching. Um, and they also wear these really cute floral dresses. Um, I love vintage style. I have always love vintage style. And so I still get loads of inspiration. I've got this massive like 1970s caftan, which is very like actually 1920s style um, that I'm making for this summer for when it gets hot. And I want to just sort of float around the house feeling fabulous um <laughs> so yeah I used to get loads of fashion inspiration when I was younger from like Poirot and Miss Marple and yeah I still do I still love like the clothes in Father Brown and things like that um so a whole mix of things really um but I think Instagram is probably the biggest one that inspires me is other people's fashion sense and other people's makes um definitely <laughs> So Emily Rankin 26 has asked me, what is something you've always dreamt of sewing or knitting? Do you plan to make it one day? Um, so I have always, always wanted to sew a quilt. Um, however, um, I just never seem to get around to it. There's always another dress to make. Um, but I have always, always wanted to sew a patchwork quilt and I'm hoping maybe this year to make one that's on my list and I'd like to hand quilt it as well because I love that look so that's really high on my list of something that I really really want to sew in terms of knitting um I'm not sure there's anything that I'm like absolutely desperate to knit oh no actually that's a lie there is I really really want to knit a Tyrolean cardigan like a traditional 1930s Austrian Tyrolean cardigan is it Tyrolean Tyrolean I don't know how you pronounce it but it's like those ones that have like cable and then embroidered flowers that were really popular in the 1930s I've got a book full of them um I can't remember who the author is um oh it's a wonderful book um but yeah it's got all these beautiful designs vintage designs and they often go in at the waist and then out they're like little peplum cardigans so that is something that I've always wanted to knit and I hope to be able to knit that one day I think it's quite a good use up of scraps as well for all the embroidery um so yeah those are two things that I would really love to make um and then pretty little cardies has asked me what craft have you tried and thought you'd love but hated um 
weaving <laughs> i bought a weaving kit like four years ago because i had all this like scrap yarns left over from knitting and i thought great i'll start learning how to weave um you know like wall hangings maybe some rugs things like that to use up all of these scraps and instead i um hated it i started it i've still got the kit somewhere actually i think yeah it's down here <laughs> it's like covered in dust this is as far as i got with it so i bought a kit from Wolkershaw, which they're great kits but i haven't done anything for four years and it's just sat here in my craft room just gathering dust not doing anything um, and i feel really guilty because it's a really nice kit with nice yarn and it would be a great way to use up <laughs> all of the scraps that i have but I just really didn't enjoy it. I found it really boring. I just thought, and it's something as well that like you could make a small, you know, like woven hanging in like an afternoon and evening if you just like sit in front of the telly or whatever, but I just couldn't get into it. So I think I'll probably end up giving that kit away. I've got a friend, um, uh, I'm like, that sounds really weird, but <laughs> she's 11. <laughs> um, so we go to church, I go to church with her parents and she's really like, we often do crafting together. She's really into crafting. Um, but, um, she, yeah, she would probably appreciate a weaving kit. So I might give it to her cause it's just been sat here for a ages, but yeah, it's a real shame. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I know a lot of people use yarn scraps to stuff cuddly toys. So I think that's a good idea is to keep a bag of scraps for that reason. But also, you know my scraps are so minimum these days like yes obviously I have like scrappy yarn in terms of like some that you can wind up and you could use to make you know like a striped baby garment or something I keep those but in terms of like the little pieces it's the same with fabric you know I have a few little pieces of fabric left they just go in the bin because like I just I can't hoard everything we live in a tiny house so yeah um I'm, I'm not going to keep loads of my scraps and try and make them into something. So weaving, something that I gave up on very quickly. Um, Kathleen, Kathleen Nalen, Nalen, um on Instagram has asked, how many hours per day do you spend knitting and does it cause you shoulder pain? So I have a rest every afternoon because I have chronic fatigue um, and my rest is popping on some TV or an audio book and doing some knitting. I tend to do that for about two and a half hours each day um roughly about there because uh, as I say I need to put my feet up because I get very very tired so I'd probably say in the afternoon I do about two and a half hours of knitting and then um in the evening I will often do maybe an hour after dinner um whilst we watch like an episode of something with my husband so I guess like three to four hours each day um I knit so that is quite a lot uh, in terms of pain, I don't get shoulder pain. Um, I have pain from fibromyalgia in my hands and my wrists and my arms. That's just something that I live with. Um, so that's just there all the time. I don't tend to find it gets exasperated by knitting so much. I know a lot of people struggle with repetitive strain injury and things like that. That isn't actually an issue for me. I actually don't struggle with that at all, um, thankfully. I might do in the future arthritis is rife in my family especially in fingers so uh, at some point that may happen but at the moment I'm really lucky and I don't get any pain from it at all really um yeah um Emily Rankin 26 on Instagram has also asked what is your favorite bible verse or a passage that has spoken to you recently thank you so much for this um Emily that's a really lovely question um and a really hard question um I think I would probably say one of my favourite, favourite verses is 1 Thessalonians 4.11, which is make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, work with your hands and mind your own business. Um, I found that really inspiring as a verse because I feel very called to living a slower, quiet life. And I feel very called to writing about that and being open about that. Um, oh, I should probably say for anyone who doesn't know, <laughs> I'm a Christian. My husband and I are Christians. We go to church. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, that's probably one of my favourite, favourite Bible verses. Um, oh, it's really hard. Um, I would say that um, I really like Psalm 139. Um, that's a beautiful psalm. Um, yeah. 
I also really love like stories in the Bible. My favourite story in the Bible is the story of Rahab. Um, I also love the story of Ruth uh, and Tamar. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> how does one choose? So yeah, I think probably my favourite like, you know, verse is probably 1 Thessalonians 4.11. Um, hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll bring some more later on. I'll share some more on Instagram at some point. Um, good for the so um, on Instagram has asked me, this is a great question, if money wasn't an issue, where do you see your life? Um, if money wasn't an issue, I would probably buy a plot of land that's about 10 acres. Um, I probably somewhere like Hereford or Scotland those are the two places that I love the most in the UK I would build a house from scratch and I would build like an eco-friendly house so I would use you know reclaimed materials I would have solar panels put everywhere so that it produces its own energy I would have things like the toilets would be full of rainwater and all that kind of stuff you know um, I don't know very much about that I'm not an architect and I don't know about sustainable architecture or anything so you know <laughs> feel free to just tell me that that's a load of rubbish um, but in my head that's kind of what I'm thinking I love glass and wood as well so like a deck house like like boarded house with like big bits of glass and stuff I would love that um and as I say I'd have 10 acres and then I think I would you know I just homestead so I would grow like all of our food I'd have chickens goats ducks I might have a horse um because I used to ride a lot when I was younger um I'd have a couple of dogs um me and my husband have always um felt like fostering might be something that we would be interested in doing um both children and adults like asylum seekers and things like that so um I would probably use my home and the fact that I didn't need to earn any money to offer refuge um and hospitality to lots of people um <laughs> yeah I think it would just be fun I'd create this really cool safe space for us and for anybody else who needs it um and I would probably still do a lot of what I do now. I would share that on Instagram, what I'm growing and what I'm, you know, baking and cooking and what I'm sewing. And I would still live a handmade, homegrown and slow life. It would just be on a slightly grander scale. Um, I'd love to do things like have a wild flower meadow. I would love to like have my own orchard. That would be incredible. Uh, a wildlife pond. So I do all of this on my 10 acres. <laughs> um so yeah I think that's what I would do and I think I would still do what I do now I would write books like that's what I've always wanted to do is write books um be a crazy author um in the Cotswolds <laughs> so yeah um that's what I would do if like money was not an issue um that's a cool question thanks for asking <laughs> um okay one final question which is from M. Noliark um on youtube sorry if i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right um what made you start blogging and making videos on youtube um so i first got into youtube back in 2011 when like zoella was just starting to become like a real big thing like obviously she began back in 2007 when youtube actually started but um yeah 2011 um i started to get really into watching makeup videos because i got really into doing my makeup really into beauty doing my hair a lot of it came from the vintage thing from wanting to be able to do vintage hair and makeup so I started watching those videos and I got really into them and then in 2012 I took a gap year um after school and I became really really low and depressed and unhappy because all my friends went off to uni and I was by myself and my boyfriend at the time broke up with me and <laughs> everything was awful I couldn't get a job because I was on an employment crisis where I lived it was all a nightmare um and so I really basically like YouTube brought me a lot of solace and a lot of happiness and I used to watch a lot of those videos with like Zoe Sugg and Louise Pentland and I used to really enjoy all those kind of like fun silly videos what I bought you know makeup hauls things like that um and I actually ended up going and training as a makeup artist in my gap year and I set up my own YouTube channel um which is this one that I use now um all the videos are now private but <laughs> um yeah I set up a YouTube channel doing a um doing 
tutorials, makeup tutorials of the makeup that I was doing um, as part of my course. I did things like Clara Oswald makeup look and stuff from Doctor Who and Kate Middleton as well was one of my big ones because obviously 2011 was when they got married and she was everywhere. Um, so yeah, that, that sort of started back then. Um, I then stopped doing that. Um, actually, no, that's not true. I did. I kept doing it for a little while, like on and off, didn't I? Um, and then I got to uni, um, in 2014, I went to uni, um, I went to study social work, which if you've watched some of my other videos, you know, didn't work out and I ended up doing something else instead. But <laughs> um, I went to Oxford Brooks and um, I continued doing my YouTube videos for a little bit, but I changed my channel slightly. and I started sharing a lot more about my Christian faith and I started doing some Christian videos. Um, and then I basically made the decision whilst I was at Oxford Brooks when I was 21 years old that I wanted to be a writer. I'd always wanted to be a writer, but I just hadn't vocalised that and I hadn't told people and I hadn't been open about it. And I also hadn't actively gone down the path to follow that dream. So I made the decision that that's what I was going to do. I quit uni and I went to study creative writing at Oxford University in the evening. And um, I set up a blog called Life with the Roof Down to help me develop my writing style and to write more stuff. And I posted on there regularly for seven years. Um, so I ran that blog for years and, um, you know, I had subscribers. I had a completely different Instagram account as well. And I did that for years. Um, and then... Um, in 2020, I went to study a master's in creative writing and um, I just I started getting paid for my work and I just decided I didn't want to blog anymore. I didn't want to write for free anymore. Um, I wasn't enjoying it like I used to. I had used it to develop my writing and my style as I'd wanted and I was moving on into being a professional writer. So I basically stopped um, the blog. And at that kind of time, I'd been watching a lot of YouTube. So I was ill at that point. I got ill in 2019. So by that point, I'd been ill for a little while and I'd been stuck at home a lot. My master's was all um, online. It was all distance learning. So I did that all at home a few hours a week. And um, I'd been watching a huge amount of YouTube and I'd been really enjoying um, people like Rosary Apparel, Janelle on Rosary Apparel, um, you know, really enjoying these kind of crafting YouTubes. And I just thought, actually, I'd really love to give that a go. I'm not blogging anymore. I haven't done YouTube for like five years, but I'd quite like to, well, it's like six years, actually. I'd quite like to start doing it again. Um, so that was sort of in the back of my mind for ages where it was like, I'd like to start a YouTube channel. And then we decided to move to the countryside and we decided to move to Chipping Norton area um, and... I was like, actually, this is the perfect time is this is like a new stage in my life. I'm going to move to the countryside, which I've been dreaming about for years. I really want to sort of like plug into living this handmade, homegrown and slow life. So I started my YouTube channel and um, in the beginning, I shared gardening as well as sewing and crafting. And then I sort of stopped with the gardening and I just did the sewing and the crafting for a bit. Um, and the same with my Instagram account. And then in this year, I've sort of, and sort of the, like a bit of last year as well, I decided to bring back in all of the homegrown stuff, all of the sort of slow living stuff and bring that back in. Um, because actually I like to share that kind of slightly wider viewpoint, not just about crafting and sewing and stuff. Um, and that's been really well received. Um, so thank you so much um, for everybody who's been really enjoying that. I'm hoping to do some more sort of like gardening vlogs this year. Um, I think I'll be doing like sort of week in the life vlogs where it's a mix of knitting, sewing, baking, gardening, cooking from the garden. Once things really start to actually kick off in the garden, um, I will start sharing more of that. Um, but yeah, I feel like my channel is like really, really developed into something that I'm really proud of and I really enjoy the topics that I talk about. Um, so yeah, I think that basically for me, um, there was lots of things really that brought me to do this, but I think it was having a community to share like my love of crafting with, having like just feeling that connection, especially as someone who's chronically ill and spends a huge amount of time alone at home. Um, sharing on Instagram and sharing on YouTube allows me to feel a bit connected during those times when I'm resting and all I can do is knit and I'm just sat there knitting. It's made a huge difference to my life. So yeah, for me, that that's massively the motivation behind it. Um, 
is being able to share that with a community um and yeah I really enjoy it I really enjoy doing this so I'm going to keep doing it <laughs> um, I hope that answered your question um thank you so much thank you so much to everybody who sent in questions um I really really appreciated that it was really fun actually a lot of your questions were really interesting so thank you so much for asking them um this is the first time I've ever done like a proper Q&A on here I think um so yeah I really, really appreciate you guys joining in. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I will be back, not next week, I'm taking a week off because it is my birthday. I'm turning 30 and I have a family birthday party and a little holiday um, to celebrate. So I'm taking a week off next week, but then I will be back the week after with a vlog all about making my 30th birthday dress. Um, so yeah, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. Um, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye.